Yo, Michael, I don't know if you peeped this earlier, but I guess the equivalent of securing a seventh seed in a play-in game for our NBA media brethren like J.A. Adande and Vincent Goodwill is that the NBA unveiled the logo for the 22 finals and they're bringing back the old script font. I mean, nice. just judging by the Twitter reaction to it from our friends in the media, they basically just jumping on the table celebrating like Patrick Beverly right now. So J.A. Adande, uh, is, is with us now, our brother from another J.A. J.A., this Anything feels like... Anything is possible! <laughs> I mean, it feels like all Great. the accomplishments, Celebrate. all the accolades, yes. everything you've done in your career, where does this rank, J.A.? <laughs> right up there. Right up there. It, it, it's funny. We, we had a, a, a uh, event in California last weekend for the Medill School of Journalism, the finest journalism institution in the world, and... Um, so we had one of my colleagues, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter, and she was talking about some of the work that she's done that has changed public policy, right? And impacted lives like that. And she's so proud of that. And I was thinking, what have I done? I said, <laughs> one, I, at that point, I feel like I helped rid the NBA of the scourge that was the, the hacker, whoever philosophy, all the fouling away from the ball to just turn it into a free, mm -hmm. free throw contest. Notice we haven't seen much of that the last few years. I'll take responsibility for that. I will also now, share responsibility along with our boy Vinny Goodwill and Dave McMenamin and Howard Beck, among others, who have been championing this cause. And so we can all collectively exult and rejoice and and feel proud of this accomplishment. <laughs> the script finals logo is back and the world is a better place for it. <laughs> Look at that logo. Way to go, they, they, they kinda, Way to go. They kind of went understated though, but as you pointed out, they kind of went F understated on the F. Like what, yeah. what? 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 They're holding back. It's like they wanted to they do are. it, but they're not sure. Right? Why? That, Why that hold old back? F was, it, it was majestic. Look at that long swoosh. I wonder if, yeah. in part, that that F, the the swoosh on the F looks like the, the Laker S and the Laker logo. So maybe they uh -huh. didn't want to be, you know, partial. <laughs> feel like they were being partial to the Lakers. We ain't got to um, worry about that. We ain't got to worry about yeah, the Lakers. Yeah, we won't be seeing I'm, I'm, the Lakers. Just, I'm just, I'm just laughing because Jay, I've seen you fired up, obviously, but I, I've never <laughs> seen you more passionate and satisfied. Hey, hey, I'm happy for you. Michael, I'm proud of I feel you. As strongly, I'm, I'm, I'm as passionately in support of the, the script finals logo as I am adamantly against the NFL draft and the the disproportionate oh. amount of attention we give to the draft. You know, okay, all right, you know moving right along. That. Moving right along. Um, how do you nice feel? Job, but I mentioned okay. I mentioned you're on the table like Pat Beverly. <laughs> Michael and I were just railing against all the old heads and young people who had the nerve, many of them from the couch, to clown the Timberwolves for not acting like they've been there before when they don't really get there enough to act like they've been there before, especially this group. Where do you come well, down on Patrick Beverly standing on the table and Anthony Edwards they, and, the, and the, the raucous celebration in, in Minneapolis? They were just there like three years ago. So it's not like they hadn't been to the playoffs since the KG era. You know, Carl Anthony Towns and, and to a large extent, this group has been there before. Anthony, Anthony Edwards, Edwards, first not, time. Yeah. Anthony Edwards, first yeah. time. Patrick Beverly has been there before. And I know it was deeply personal, you know, for yeah. him to go back against the Clippers. In some ways, it reminds me of, remember in, in 95 when, when, um, when the Orlando Magic with Horace Grant beat the Chicago Bulls, who had oh, yeah. basically let let Horace Grant go the year before he previously played there. And uh, remember they carried Horace Grant off the court after they won that. So that reminded me a little bit, you know, that was after the second round. Um, but slightly more seriously, to me, this is about the standards and the expectations that we have for ourselves and that people hold for each other. And I feel like there's been a lowering of standards really across the board in this country. And the, the reason why Ooh, it okay. felt inappropriate to me was uh, to, to be standing on the scorer's table after winning the play-in game, not even a playoff series, um, is that that used to be something reserved for championships. And, you know, you, you guys and me, we grew up on seeing but Michael Kobe. Jordan do it and then Kobe Bryant yeah. doing it. And so that was something that you do after the championship. You don't hold a parade after winning a first round series. You know, there's certain things that you, you need to wait until you've accomplished it. And I think there's something to be said for restraint, for not indulging your urges. I'm sure there's plenty of times when people wanted to jump on the scores table Come and on. felt happy, but you know what? It's not no. appropriate at that time. You should hold no. restraint. 
If what? you're trying okay. to lose weight, can, you, re okay. can hey. you restrain from pissing on a parade that they shouldn't be throwing? Like, come on, J.A. Hey. Mike. Hey, Jay, I'm not Jay, saying they should be punished. I'm not. Why do we? I'm, I'm saying they, they deserve all the mockery that they got. Yes, they should be clowned for it. They shouldn't be punished. They shouldn't oh. be sanctioned. Nothing like that. But yes, you can get clowned by the TNT inside the NBA guys and all that. You can get clowned for for basically holding a parade for jumping on the scorers right. table after winning the playing game. You're the number seven hey, seed. Hey, That's hey, what you see, achieved. Hey, no, they're just a kid. Hey, look, look. The Minnesota Timberwolves are just a kid getting picked on. And in the cafeteria, because you tell me the context, you tell me the context of Rip City from Dame or the bye. Was that in the NBA Finals? He, he so, grabbed, so my man grabbed the this. mic. What, he what, grabbed the what's, mic. What's, 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 he didn't jump on the scorer's table, though. And, and one thing he did, and something else I thought this was comparable to, so there's that iconic picture. They all dogpiled on him. And he's got that stoic expression yeah, on his yeah. face looking. It's like a, almost like a fish eyed yeah. lens. Mm -hmm. Also, just mm -hmm. like the real calm thing. He didn't jump on. He just bye bye. Remember when Derrick Rose hit that shot to beat Cleveland in, in a playoff game yeah. and everyone was running to hold him up. He was just he's like, like to me, that's yeah, cooler. Yeah. If you can be calm and stoic in that moment when that is your moment and your reaction is to just that's cooler than jumping no. on the scorers table early no. in the playoffs. So no, uh, to go. me, be like Dane. Look at be hey. like Derrick Rose. Don't be like Jordan and Kobe. Until you what you need to be like Jordan and Kobe did. Be How, like, they probably be like, gonna have a sniffer scores table in the championship anytime you, soon. You gotta celebrate. You gotta celebrate. Well, you make, like, making up these rules. Hey, and, and, and actually, hey. I'm revising that. So the only reason I was giving oh. conference finals is because I thought that iconic shot of Patrick Ewan raising his arms when they went to the NBA finals in 1994. I thought he went on the table for that. He actually didn't go on the scorer's table for that. That was on the ground. So I'm actually let these this people is why we live. need an in Twitter. This is why we need to let these people, people live. live because to me, Paul, Paul you shouldn't be on the scorer's table until after you won the NBA finals. I'm revising. NBA oh, finals. Hey, listen, on the I covered this game, so, Jay. I, I, I covered, I covered this game like... with Michael Smith, <laughs> with, with a young, with a young Michael Smith. I covered this game in Boston. The Celtics came back from 20 points down in the conference finals against Jason Kidd's Nets. Paul Pierce, yes, yes, stood on the table, and, and, and they won another game. Though. I remember that. Oh, that was the <laughs> biggest comeback in postseason history. <laughs> At that time, wasn't it the biggest uh, one in postseason history, Michael? Yep. The biggest comeback in postseason? Yep. Yeah, that's right. right. I mean, that's listen, right. Jay, in general, look, I mean, like I said earlier, the purpose of the play-in is to be a precursor to the playoffs. Context is everything here, okay? You're talking about Kobe Bryant. You're talking about, you know, Jordan. I'm setting high icons standards. of the game. I'm setting the people, exactly well, well, high standards. But the Timberwolves, Who held themselves but the to high standards. Who hold themselves yeah, okay, to high standards. But the Timberwolves, the Timberwolves, or have never carried that kind of standard in recent history. So the, it, 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 I find it interesting that the people were, that were laughing on TNT are Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley, and Kenny Smith. Okay, these people are all Hall champions of Famers and legends and, and Hall of Famers and champions and legends. Right. So what I'm saying is context of not just Patrick Beverly's bitterness toward the Clippers, but a team that doubled its win total from last year. So maybe they right. win a couple of years ago with Jimmy Butler. But since Jimmy Butler left, this has been a loser franchise that was 7 and 24 when its coach took over last year. Patrick Beverly is discarded, comes in. Carl, Th Carl Anthony Towns, we know what he's been through personally. We know what people have said about him from a reputation standpoint. 20 year old Anthony Edwards, who's the most underrated number one overall pick that I can remember in recent memory. And now they go into a play in which they win 46 games and now they got to earn their spot in the play and they do it at home in front of the home crowd down to the fourth quarter. When they look, when they look overwhelmed at the your, beginning, come on. Let me ask both you guys as parents, where do you stand on participation trophies? Do you think your kids should get a trophy for, for playing in the soccer league? Or do you think they should no, hold out? But I'm not going to be a killjoy hey. either. Show me your badge. No, we're not, we're not, we're not even we're, we're, clowning. we're not killing joys, we're clowning. There's a difference. It's we're, not we're, one in the same. We're, we're not saying Jay. we should revoke their access to the playoffs because they overly celebrated. We're just saying, hey, you're acting like you won a championship when you won the right to have What's the wrong number with that? seven seed. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, Adonde, I'm going to answer your question. Should my kids get a participation trophy? trophy? <laughs> yes, they should because they got the Holly name and they made a team. You know what? That's a big thing. They made a team? Like, Is we, that what we, the Holly we, family hey, is about? They made the team. They made the team? Hey, just, 
Give me a minute on the, give me a minute on the field or a minute on the court. That's enough. Okay. Wow. <laughs> With their fathers at limited athletic ability, and they were able to take that and make a team. I'm happy hey, and the family's happy. Jay, hey, listen, we up against the clock a little bit. We only got a few more minutes left. I really I, nobody we've been talking about the Lakers really all season, but especially in the last week, just doing the autopsy or what have you. Um and uh, unpacking this season, I should say. So nobody that I know knows this team, this franchise like you have been covering them for so long, up close with the LA Times. You know this market, you know this franchise. Your general takeaway from this season and the prognosis or the or, or, or the you know, what does it look like for the Lakers moving forward? But more than anything, settle something for me and Michael. I really feel like despite the history and tradition um, and, and, and the banners and the jerseys and, and all and it just the, the the iconic nature of this franchise. I feel like that job that head coaching position is not a very desirable one for anybody with any meaningful options. I'm not saying nobody will take it. But uh, but the, the high profile coach that that organization thinks it's entitled to, I don't see why anybody would want it want to walk into that dysfunction. So just all of that, take it wherever you want to go. You know the Lakers better than anybody, Jay. Yeah, we'll we'll look at the coaching and uh, Mike. We want to talk about Lakers history and, and more more important, more relevant recent history, right? That's more relevant than than the Showtime days that we're looking at how they're going to get out of this and where they should go from here. And part of the problem, and to me, one thing that led to the demise of Jim Bus when he was running things was the poor selection of coaches um, and how sometimes it can be more costly to not spend the requisite amount or the necessary amount on coaches. So if they had spent more money and secured Imani Williams and sec or secured a Tyron Liu, um, they wouldn't be in this situation right now. And, um, you know, because they didn't want to give them the amount that they were looking for, you wound up with Frank Vogel. You won a championship with Frank Vogel. Um, but he is now, or became, or was, part of the problems. And the situation, the coaching position now, is part of the problem. You don't have an answer at a very important position. And to me, it's similar to when they brought in Mike Brown, who was the wrong coach at that time for that team. They brought in Mike D'Antoni to replace him, who was the wrong coach at that time for that team. It's not that Mike D'Antoni is not a good coach. We saw the success he had in Houston after he left the Lakers, and of course, in Phoenix prior to being with the Lakers. But with that roster with two big men, um, that didn't suit the way that he wanted to coach. And so that was a bad decision that they made. So it was ultimately, um, it, it's, it's weird to say it was a bad decision to hire Frank Vogel when um, you won a championship with Frank Vogel, but um, it was, now it's looking like the bad decision because you wouldn't have had questions as the coach. If you hired Tyron Lue and you give him a five-year contract, guess what? Among the things you're dealing with, down the stretch of the season, you're not having to worry about, oh, what's going to happen with the coach? You're not having to worry about, are the players going to tune out the coach because they feel like they can outlast him? Um, if you show that type of commitment to a coach, you take that away. And that's what happened. One of the best moves they ever made was when they brought in Bill Jackson in 1999 after underachieving the previous two years in the playoffs, and now there was accountability. They brought him in, five-year contract. I think it was like 5 or $6 million, which made him the highest-paid coach at the time per year. And um, all of a sudden now, if you if you hit a rough patch, you don't have stories about is the coach going to get fired. You know that's not an issue. You know that's not going to happen when you have a big name coach with a serious contract. So now the players can look and say, okay, if we kind of take a couple games off, maybe we get this coach on up out, out of here. Even if they don't like the coach, they have to continue to perform because they're more likely to get shipped out at the end of the year yeah. than he is. You've yeah. got a big coach on a big contract. Yeah. Hey, so uh, Jay, so, yeah, we bro, appreciate so you, I heard man. You, and we do. And I heard, you know what I heard him say, Mike? That the job is, is desirable. A... I heard him say the job is still desirable. Okay. It's still a high, a high profile right. job. Yes. You know what? You know what I want to say? You know what I want to say, Michael Holly? This was a great segment. Let's go to break. <laughs> we did a fantastic segment <laughs> on a Wednesday <laughs> on Peacock. Stand on the table. On YouTube. Stand on the table. On Sirius XM Radio. Up. On serious XM Radio. Get on the table. Uh, yes. Careful. I Careful. might break it if no, I no, do. No. I might break it. Serious XM no, no, Radio. YouTube. Don't go too far. Peacock. <laughs> this was the best segment on a Wednesday in the history of whatever this is. <laughs> the streaming show. That's right. Let's go. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock.
Appreciate you.